Regression is a type of supervised learning that predicts continuous output values from a set of input features. The goal of regression is to build a model that can accurately predict the target value for new unseen data. And so as we talk about machine learning for engineers and the typical data flow, we start with our business objective. What are we trying to do with this regression model? What are we trying to predict? And then we collect data. We sometimes use a physics-based digital twin. We consolidate that data together. We go through data cleansing, scaling, and then splitting the data. And sometimes we go into the train, validate, and test. For this example, I'm going to just show train and test. And then if we have labels to it, then we can do supervised learning. And if those labels, the outputs, are continuous values, not categories, like a 1 or a 0 or a cat or a dog, but 1.2, 1.5, 7.9. If we have continuous values that we're trying to predict, then we're going to use regression to try to create that prediction. Now, we're going to start with the uh, very first one, okay, and that's going to be linear regression. That is often the easiest place to start, but throughout this, I'm going to show you how to predict on 42 different regression models with a single line of code. And there's some powerful tools and packages in Python to enable you to look at a variety of different regression models. Okay, so the five that we're going to be talking about here in this introduction are linear regression, k-nearest neighbor, support vector regressor, Gaussian processes, and neural network regressor, uh, as well as XGBoost regressor. So let's go ahead and just jump into a couple examples here. Let's do a one-dimensional regression where we're going to import NumPy, matplotlib, and then we're going to import sklearn make regression. We'll import linear regression and we'll make our regression model. Okay, and as we go through this, let me go ahead and just annotate one of these plots over here. So this plot right here shows the data that we are generating. All right, and we can see the blue points that we just created with that make regression function. All right, now we want to create the linear regression model and we're going to do model.fit with our x and y values. In this case x is just a single feature, a single predictor that then we can use to predict the y value. All right, and then we'll plot the data and the fitted line. So let's go ahead and plot the blue points and then also the red line and then give it a couple labels and then save it as a figure and then we'll show it. Okay, so when we run this, I'll go ahead and do that. Uh, just run this. All right. And when I run it, then you'll see that it's going to use linear regression. And there is our model with the data and the predicted values. Okay, so that's a one-dimensional case where we just had one feature all right, one feature here and then one outcome, one label there. But let's say we have two features instead. So let's cover that case where we're going to now make this, uh, okay, give this uh, two features. So we need to visualize this with a three-dimensional plot where we have feature, the first feature, the second feature, and then there's our output. So let's go ahead and do this one as well. It just becomes a little bit more complicated to visualize it. All right, I'm going to import the same packages that we were using. And the big difference here is that now number of features equals two. I also increase the noise a little bit more. And then we'll fit our regression model. So same as before, X and Y. And we'll plot the fitted surface. So I need to create this 3D plot. And I'll create the scatter plot of the data values. And then I'm going to create a mesh grid uh, across the x0 and x1, the two features that I have, between negative 3 and 3 with 10 points each. All right, and then I'll 
uh, go ahead and create my prediction X and then uh, do some reshaping there to get this matrix of values back into this Y surf that I can plot with a plot surface. All right, and I'll set the X label, and I'll set the Y label and the Z label, and then I'll show the plot. So let's go ahead and do this one in, as well. This one's kind of nice because then you can rotate the plot around and look at the fit. All right, I'll go ahead and make that just a little bit larger so you can see the data and how well we are fitting to the surface. So overall, a fairly reasonable fit. You can see that the data points kind of disappear. Okay, I only have a small section. I guess I should have uh, plotted more of them on here. I only have a very small section that is plotted, okay? All right, so there it is. There's our two-dimensional, uh, two input features. You have to use a 3D plot. But what happens when you go to higher dimensional? Then we switch over to something like is shown here, where we do a parity plot, where we create the measured versus the predicted value, and how see how well it fits along this 45 degree line. So let's go ahead and do that now. So I'm gonna do a five dimensional. All right, so in this case, it's the same as before, same packages, but now the number of features equals five instead of two. And then I'm going to do the train test split, just like I showed earlier, how we were splitting these into different sets. I'm gonna have a train and a test set. So I want to do that so I can train it on one set and then test it on another set that has not yet seen the data, okay, where the regression model hasn't uh, seen it. So I'll fit it with the train set, and then I want to plot it um, you know, both with the train and then also with the test as well. And I'll create two subplots for that. All right, I'll go ahead and save that one. And let's go ahead and just open that with IDLE, or you can do it in a Jupyter Notebook or some other Python environment. All right, and this will show the train test split. We had 80% of the data used for training, and then 20% of the data used for the test or the validation. Okay, so you can see the fit uh, overall did a fairly good job of fitting. But let's say we're not necessarily satisfied with just um, you know linear regression model. We want to maybe test others as well. So I'll show you how to generate okay a list of regressions and return this ranked list where the best performance is going to be listed first. Okay, on this data set. Linear regression was actually second on the list. Transformed target regressor was first. And then you can see a list of some of the regression uh, models that are used here. We're going to actually have more than that. Okay, so let's go to this final example, similar as before. And I'm going to import lazy predict as a package from supervise. We'll import the lazy regressor. All right, and I'll get the standard scalar. I'll need to scale the data because some of the regression models need to be scaled, uh, and we'll just use a standard scalar for that, where you have a mean zero and standard deviation of one for each of the data columns. Now I'll have a train test split and make regression. I'll generate some sample data with a linear relationship. Again, we'll use our five features for the input and one output. And I'll reshape that, we'll scale the data, and I'll use a standard scalar to scale both the inputs and the output. Then we'll have a train test split, and we'll just keep 20% of it for the test, 80% of it for the training set. Now let's evaluate the many regressors here. We'll use our lazy regressor, and there's also a lazy classifier as well, if you'd like to try that. Then we'll get our models and predictions, and then we'll print the results 
and also save it to a CSV file as well. So if you don't have this, then just do uh, pip install lazy, okay, and that is called lazy predict. So there's the package um, if you'd like to install it, okay, if you don't already have it. All right, and then I'll go ahead and just run this. I'll run this through an anaconda prompt. Okay, you could also run it through IDLE if you'd like to, or Jupyter Notebook or some other method as well. All right, and then let's go ahead and just do Python and regressors. Okay, and you'll see as it uh, runs through all of the different regressors, some of them did not run. You can say, see here like the um, the gamma regressor and the Poisson regressor and the half Poisson loss. Um, those all had some problems with them. So, uh, but all of these other ones did a fairly good job of, uh, you know, you could see, um, you know, the R squared values and you could see many of them above 0.8 on that. All right, and you can also see this results.csv file that it produced, it returned it as a pandas data frame. And so we did two CSV and then created this results file that showed all of the different results for the different regressors and the adjusted R square, the R square, the root mean square, and the time taken for the regression. Okay, so there are all the results. Okay, so that's it for the regression. Um, you know, there are many different regression models, and typically if the linear regression is does a fairly good job, it's gonna be uh, one of the better even for extrapolation. Um, you know, sometimes a neural network, if you, you know, access data outside the training region, then uh, it can extrapolate poorly. Uh, but, uh, you know, some of them do a better job at extrapolation than others. I'll put this link in the video description, and this gives also some links to some additional information about these different regressors and some of the math and different examples uh, behind them. And it gives some additional information on each of these with additional examples and case studies that you can use. Okay, so uh, all of the source code is all here as well. If you'd like to get that, just select Show Python Source and then come down here and get code. And then you can copy that in to your script. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed this regression overview. Uh, and we're glad that you came and visited the Machine Learning for Engineers course.